now as if you were Prospero and all those airborne impulses were your men. I think you're a bit late. Yeah, I was. I was late. I, I need to be finished in that, this position in the silence. In the silence, the right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that'll work better. Let me try it again. Now, as if you were Prospero, and all those airborne impulses were your minions, command them all back. Reverse the roar of those jets. Redirect their directions. Is that any better? That's it, that's it. Yeah. That's good. Huh? Air, I think you got it, Peter. I'm, I'm, also, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned that we get, yeah, uh, it needs that. I'm concerned that we get a, a movement from the tight shot to a wide enough shot to capture the expansiveness of that gesture at that point. Yeah. I guess that's up to Tom. Got that, Tom? Got it. Very good. Thanks, guys. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, okay. Peter. Great. Ready? The idea that I was trying to test here was whether or not you could get useful collaboration through the high fidelity link that's possible using the bandwidth and quality of service you get from internet too. Everybody is on such a tight schedule that they can hardly breathe. So, and that's in the academic world, that's in the business world, that's even in my kids world. So it's great to be able to have virtual scheduling where we don't actually find that we all have to be in the same place at the same time because we can all be there virtually. Basically, this allows me to, to reach across into the other person's world and grab usable material without actually having to be there, and that's a real advantage. In order to test my idea that teleconferencing of this level of fidelity might be useful for artistic collaboration over a distance, I enlisted the aid of a group of Michigan artists just beginning a group project. Peter Sparling, a dancer and choreographer, Jim Cogswell, a visual artist, Richard Tillinghast, a poet, Andy Mead, a composer, and Fred Bookstein, biostatistician, and the only non-artist in the group. He's not with us at the moment, but his brain mapping software is what was used to create the grid you'll see later. I convinced them to let me divide them into two groups to simulate being in two distant locations. So I put them in two pairs and asked them to use only email, telephone, and the great link to talk to the other pair about their work. My job was to make this technology work. I set up two stations with a variety of peripheral equipment to enable the artist to converse in as nearly a face-to-face -face situation as possible. I also set up equipment to enable them to capture and send sound and images back and forth to each other. This turned out to be a very useful way to work around the inherent transmission delay for material that needed precise synchronization. One of the benefits of this working process is we can take signal right off the line, make a CD, and see how the voice mixes with the tape of my music right there. And then that's something we can then edit, we can play around with, and if I don't like it, or if Richard doesn't like it, we can change it on the spot. We don't have to be constantly mailing these things back and forth to each other. In addition to being able to send the audio back and forth, for example, the fidelity of the video is good enough, I can actually pull usable footage. For example, if we put a dancer in front of a blue screen, I can take that image and composite it with other stuff. This is not, without tra uh, training, going to be a completely transparent medium. I'm interested in that fact as an artist and want us as artists to learn how to use it, not by ignoring it, but by taking advantage of what particular qualities it uh, interjects into what our collaborations are. Uh, beginning a collaboration with a friend in New York City, and it's going to be impossible to take my seven dancers to New York to show him the work I'm uh, doing. I'd love to just beam him rehearsal after rehearsal and let him uh, create his score uh, uh, as I create. I'm interested in presenting a version of this collaboration to some colleagues at some art schools in Japan. And I think that um, while I look forward to, to making that trip to Japan to make final versions or perhaps a final performance, this might make the timetable for that whole event speed up. Um, I'm interested in seeing how fast they can get hooked up the way we're hooked up. For me, it's been very valuable because I, I feel as if I, well, I understand something about your music and, and the relation between what you were creating and what I was writing. That's 
real solid. I feel really good about that. I yeah. feel as if I'm really in the middle of the project now. And yeah. So that's been a really well, good yeah, thing. I mean, like, it has been an important catalyst. I think we have. Yeah. I think it, we're, we're much more, uh, we're much further along in our collaboration yeah. than yeah. we would have been if we hadn't tried to focus on doing yeah. this.